welcome. Um, this is the first of the series of tutorials now that we know how to set up AI. Let me show you just a few details about this. Um, this has got a lot of bells and whistles in it that I've uh, put in here together to uh, make stuff uh, look pretty good. Um, it uses a couple things. One, it uses a package called Aura 2. Aura 2 is a volumetric lighting um, package. Um, there are a number of presets that you can play with um, up here at the top so you can kind of pound through um, some of these. Look down here in the game version. Uh, a couple different presets that you can look with. Uh, it comes with Dawn as the preset already set up so that if I maximize this on play um, then you can see how this all works out. It's got uh, some sound already built in um, that should work out so you can hear the torches running. Um, it's also got post-processing effect, uh, that stack up and running as well. Um, but what this will build is a pretty nice looking scene um, that's got some pretty nice lighting um, that has a lot of god rays um, as you start to come around corners. Um, and you can see those god rays kind of, kind of coming through. So you can kind of play with a lot of different uh, things about this. Um, for instance, you can see that I'm using depth of field on it um, so that things close start to fall out. Um, you know how to work with the post-processing stack so you can adjust that if you want. Uh, or if you hate these god rays, you can turn those off as well, but I think it uh, looks pretty good. Okay, um, you shouldn't have to play around with this too much. It should already be set up though. Um, I wouldn't want you to be spending a whole bunch of time fooling around with the look of the project. We really want to build on the functionality of the project um, as we go. But feel free to kind of play around with that, um, uh, with, with how it looks. All right, meanwhile, um, the way that this uh, game is supposed to be structured is we're going to have some AI. Now, a few things that might pop up as you're working in Aura. Aura is kind of high-end um, stuff here, so sometimes uh, there's a bunch of different things in here, some preset volumes and some other things that are set there. If you start to end up with some yellow errors um, as you're playing with them, don't worry about them. You can go ahead and leave those away. Um, if your preview here uh, disappears and you don't have Aura up here, then there's a Disable Aura Preview and an Enable Aura Preview up here at the top. You can play with those if you want to. Otherwise, though, the only thing that you really care about is what it looks like inside of the game. Um, so that should be fine. But you'll see that what it's doing is generating some uh, light maps. Um, so there's all those yellow things. Don't worry about them. I'm just going to um, hide those for now. Um, and that should be um, set to what we're doing. Um, so feel free to kind of play around with, with the look. But as we get ready now to start to work with, I'm going to uh, leave us uh, leave the Aura preview off for a moment so that I can kind of see my scene a little bit easier. What I need to start to do is get my bad guys um, into the scene. All right, so once you're in Mixamo, you can pick a character uh, that you think is interesting. I like this guy. I think he's pretty gnarly looking, uh, but you can use um, any of them that you want. Uh, what I'm then going to do is come into the animations, and uh, the idea here is that this is a wizard. He's going to kind of throw around some balls of power. So let's look at for wizard pack, just do a search for wizard pack. There's a whole bunch of these. Some have 56 different animations, lots of them in there. Um, the light magic pack um, probably has all the animations we need, though. So it looks like we've got a hang out, we've got to throw the ball, we've got some super powered one if we want to, um, we've got to look around, animation looks good, we got a jump which we won't be using here, we get a got hit, oh we got a die animation, that's great, we got a got hit animation, and then importantly we've got to run backwards, and it looks like we had a walk forward um, animation as well as some turns, although we won't be using um, all of those. Oh, there's a walk forward, so that's great. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on download. Again, FBX, FBX for Unity. Um, T-Pose is fine. We'll go ahead and download that file. Now remember that what this does is this is going to download a zipped archive uh, that has both the geometry in it and all of the animations. So we'll see this light magic pack um, this should be somewhere in your uh, in your downloads folder. So in my downloads folder, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unzip it. This is happening off screen, but it shouldn't matter. Um, I'm going to unzip it and then come back into Unity, 
and go ahead and bring this into my scene. Now I'm going to start to close some of this stuff down because we got an awful lot of stuff open there just to make sure I'm tracking it down. Um, so I'll import this into Unity by just dragging and dropping it um, into the scene. Um, this will bring in all of the assets. Now just as a quick review, so here's the light magic pack, so maybe I'm going to call this uh, my wizard, uh, wizard assets, um, just so that I can wizard asserts. Um, my wizard assets, um, just so I can keep track of it. Now let's do a little bit of uh, upfront work that we know how to do. So there's the character. Remember, if I bring the character in and drop the character in, then we've got these problems that no textures, which of course we know how to fix. I'll select the character. Let's come into the materials. Um, let me adjust my layout here just a little bit. I'm going to extract the t uh, textures into a new folder that I'm going to call textures. So I'll extract the textures really quick. Uh, quite a few of them probably ask me if I want to use them as normal, say yes. And just in case we choose to, let's go ahead and extract the materials too so we can make changes to those if we needed to. All right, some other things that we know we're going to want to do here is let's come into the animation. We shouldn't have to worry about any of the animation in the rig, though we want to make sure that we set this to humanoid and that we want to make sure that create the avatar from this model. Now this, remember, gives us now uh, our version now has its own avatar inside of it, which we need. It's got an animation, which is actually the T-pose, which is useless. But for us, what we do need to do now is all of these, remember, you can't see anything on them because they don't have avatars. Um, so I'm going to select all the rest of the animations, just as a review here. I'm going to come into the Rig tab, make sure I'm using Humanoid. And then I don't want to create a new avatar, but I want to copy from an avatar and it's the avatar that I used on that geometry. So I'll put all that stuff in there and I'll go ahead and click on apply. So this is all review um, pretty quick, but what should happen now is that if we look at any of these, say we're looking at the idle and we look at the animation, then now there's actually um, some of this there. Now we can do some things that will help us uh, uh, work a little faster. I know for instance that I'm going to make sure that I want to walk. I'm probably going to have a run when the character runs towards us. So I can do a little bit of creation here, a little bit of fixing. As I look at this, oh that's a walk backwards, a walk forward. As I look at this walk forward, that's a good walk but he's walking diagonally. Uh, remember we can fix this. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to change this to loop time. I'm going to bake into the pose, make sure this is set to original uh, as far as the root transform rotation. So then when I click on apply, Sometimes you have to go out and come back in, but now as the character walks, then you can see that he's walking right along that line. So let's do that uh, as well on the, uh, let's do the run forward. Uh, oh, let's also make sure, last thing on this walk, that we change the name of it um, to walk. Um, let's come and do the run, so the run forward. Yes, go ahead and apply. On the run forward, I'm going to rename this to run. Uh, I'm also going to come down make sure that it loops. I'm going to bake it into the pose using the original rotation um, there and go ahead and click on apply. What this should make this do now is that he runs along that one line. Finally, um, let's look at a few others that we know that we're going to do. Let's go ahead and do the standing idle. Um, let's uh, go ahead and loop that. I'm going to bake that rotation in. Let's go ahead and click on apply. Um, let's see if that idle, eh, that idle's okay. Yeah, I like that idle better. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use that one. So let's uh, bake the rotation using original, and then we'll go ahead and bake that in there. Um, we'll need to make sure this is, okay, so it looks like there's the death animation. Yeah, that one will be great too. So in the death animation, we don't want to loop that one, but we can go ahead and bake the original rotation in um, just so that it uh, falls back like we need to. And then let's look at these magic attacks. Okay, that's a pretty good one. So he's throwing um, the ball, uh, uh, the whatever he's got. So let's go ahead and loop that one. Uh, I'm going to make sure and bake its rotation so that it's set so that it's uh, he'd be throwing it forward, right? So he's throwing it in the direction that he's looking. So what we've got now is, uh, oh, I wonder if I named all of these. So this one will be my attack. Uh, let's go ahead and apply. 
this idle. Let's go ahead and name the idle. Click on apply. Um, there's the death. So we'll go ahead and uh, hit enter and click on apply. Then we've got the run forward. Yeah, we named that one run. The walk forward, we got that one walk. Um, that should be fine. Okay, so what we've got is we've got those four animations that are all imported. Um, once we've got all these imported, now we can start to build this mechanism in to actually use it. So uh, if I'm looking at this character, the character is set there. It's got an animator. It doesn't have a controller yet. So let's make sure and create an animator controller uh, right there. And let's call this uh, wizard controller. Uh, and then I'll make sure and plug that into our character. So I've got our wizard controller plugged in. Um, so that's set up there. What this will allow me to do then is I can start building this stuff in. So let's uh, look at the wizard controller. I'm going to double click to open it up. Let's uh, work with our idle. So as I bring that idle out, uh, let's see, this is the idle I like better, huh? Yeah. So let's get rid of uh, this one and bring out idle 2. Uh, so that that's set there. What will happen is that right now if I were to play the game, let's not maximize on play, then this character would immediately just shift into an idle, uh, where the character would just be standing there playing that idle animation um, in loop, kind of looking around. All right, um, so uh, that's set up pretty well. All right, a few last things that we want to do kind of in a hurry to make sure this works. I'm going to select the set I want to make sure that the set is set to be navigation static again because we want to make and yes change the children because we're going to want to be using our nav mesh uh, functionality to, to build this. Uh, once I set all of that to static I'm going to come over here to the navigation um, here let's come into the bake I'm going to clear this uh, whatever was there and go ahead and hit the bake um, again. Um, the default settings here will probably be fine. Um, this is a much bigger scene uh, and the nav mesh that it has to figure is much more complex. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let that run. While that's running I want to show you a few other things that uh, that I want you to see. Notice that none of this has a mesh collider. That all of the objects have separate colliders built on top of the objects for a much simpler um, collision um, structure um, so that we're and this is how most games are actually built with simple colliders um, built into the into the set now not everything will have it but most things will uh, and this should um, work out pretty well all right so I'll let this bake uh, you might um, set the uh, the the bake to go uh, and then go get some dinner because this is a pretty complex scene Okay, so we're back and this is finished baking. Uh, you can see that the nav mesh is pretty complex. Um, that uh, if some things uh, are low to the ground, then it's going to allow the character to walk over them. Uh, but if it's a larger object, then it's actually blocked that off. Now, the default settings there should be generally pretty good. Um, but what this is doing is you can see that it's kind of baked a big old swath of, of ground there, um, even though we're generally only going to be working um, with this inside here. Um, now that'll be fine uh, for, for what we're what we're going to be building. Um, but at this point we're ready to start to build the AI uh, and this AI will let us start to build um, how the scene works.